So I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, as always, we want to talk about our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is your responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market wrap up for Saturday, July 2nd. In this video, we'll look at the economic calendar, see what happened the past week and what to look for uh, for the upcoming week. Uh, we'll look at the price action from the past week and identify key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the charts of our market leaders, Apple, Amazon, Priceline, Netflix, Google, Goldman Sachs, and the likes. Uh, we'll look at dollar, gold, and accrued charts, and we have education spotlight at the end. And of course, let me take a quick moment to say happy 4th of July to everyone. Uh, we are certainly in the greatest country in the world. So when we look at what happened the past week, we can see that the market uh, rallied. Uh, this rally was the biggest move in the past two years. All sectors gained at least almost 3%, led by technology, which was up almost 7%. And that brought um, us out of the negative territory. However, the financial sector is the only sector remaining in negative for the year. It is still down 2%. And anybody that's looked at Goldman Sachs chart, as we do, can tell why it is still down. Overseas, the Greek parliament uh, successfully voted for its austerity measure so it can re receive its uh, bailout from the EU and the IMF. Uh, the market rallied before and after that. Uh, corporate news, we have Bank of America agreed to pay $8.5 billion in a settlement with its investors uh, regarding the mortgage uh, issues. Uh, MasterCard and Visa uh, rallied when the, the fees for the interchange were lower than expected. And there wasn't any real economic news uh, this week. The big thing was once we got the Greece vote, uh, the market just continued to move. Yes, there were some consumer sentiment and ISM. Uh, was better than expected, but for for overall, this was just a pure all, all out buying and then short cover short cover rallying followed by buying. So when we look into what's going on next week, there's no real uh, big earnings coming up. We do have third quarter earnings coming out. Uh, I think in another week. I think not this week, but the following week, we have our new round of earnings kicking off. Uh, of course, the market is closed for the 4th of July. We have factory words on Tuesday, but now we have our jobs numbers coming out this week, ADP on Wednesday, and employment situation on Friday. Let's uh, pull up the charts. Okay, as we look at the daily chart for the S&P 500, there's a couple things that we, of course, want to uh, uh, look at. I'm just redrawing. Uh, this downtrend line to show you some important things that happened this week. Of course, first and foremost, we can see that we came down to 200 moving average two weeks ago. We we consolidated there, and then this past week we came back, retested the um, the 200 moving average, and just sky skyrocketed off of that. And there's two key points to look on that, and we'll zoom in one more time. First was when we broke about 1300. That was certainly a key point. So that was a Wednesday move. That is a little modified W pattern here. Down, up, down, up. So 1300 was the W pattern. And then on Friday, when you got above 1320, that was the downtrend line from the past um, swing high. And we broke that. So there were some key areas to look to get in. You missed the bounce off the 200 moving average. Okay. Next place to look to get in was this W pattern. And the next place to trade a breakout was on Friday. So with this huge move that we have on the daily, we can see that we're already getting back towards overbought on RSI and stochastics. Um, uh, MACD is lagging behind just a little bit, and we can see that heck, we're only 30 points or so off from the last swing high here. So, uh, the next key price level to watch is 1345, which is this little swing high here before we push down hard. So, that's going to be our next area if, to see if we can get through before we actually do see if we can test the past swing high. Now, when we zoom out into the weekly, we can really begin to see what this move really did. Uh, I mean, you can see well, one, two, three, four. Four weeks, the month of June, 
was wiped out by the last week of June. Um, and again, you can see that 1346, 35 uh, resistance price level that we're watching. Um, and as we were getting towards oversold on stochastics, RSI was in the middle, but you can see we never got all the way down on the weekly. So, uh, and we never actually made it fully to the 50 moving average. So, We've got uh, two things to look at. We've got the weekly and the daily sort of overbought. Let's zoom out to the monthly. And there we go. And we can see here that we're still in the overbought price level. So what that should mean is if the daily and the weekly can fully get to overbought, we can get uh we have a short setting up here because our monthly is overbought and looking to hook down uh and so if the weekly and the daily can agree with that we have a short where can that short be well again we're looking at two places uh obviously the first place we're looking at as we zoom in as we said is at 13.45 which is our last swing high and then the last if we get through there then we have to start looking at what's going to happen here um, so this could be a double top if that short happens according to the monthly charts um, and we get that dual time for ag frame agreement. Uh, but again, what do we have this week? We have job numbers. Certainly the job numbers is what crushed us here. And we'll see if this week's job number will once again crush the market. Okay, so we're going to start off with Apple. And there's a couple things we should see right off the bat. Uh, again, uh, once we rally right on back up through the, the 200 to 20 to 50 moving average, but notice that where we're stopping right now is at a, a key resistance level. We have a couple things going on there as far as resistance. So again, you know, I, I'm as bullish as the next person, uh, optimist as the next person, but we do have some key economic numbers this week, and we do have, as you can see, the market at a key point. The S&P 500 broke through that key resistance, but here we see Apple still underneath it. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon has already broken out, and it has made a new swing high, so that is great. So we have one uh, uh, up to sideways with Apple. We have Amazon that is clearly up, uh, looking good, looking good. Um, let's go to Google. Google, nice rally, and you can see Google rally right to a key downtrend line, 50 million average here. Google is weaker than the rest, um, possibly entering into this this new uh, auction level here in between the, the 50 and the, this is the 500 million average here. Um, so that, I'm going to put Google in the same situation as Apple, up the sideways there. Uh, Goldman Sachs, we talked about the financial sector still being down for the year. Look at that. Um, and I'm sure if I drew my line down, we would see something similar. But we can see, really, uh, Goldman Sachs is still in the same auction area that it's been in since uh, May you know, 18th or so. So uh, it's still in this sideways action. If we could get Goldman Sachs to start breaking up, especially with the, the, the 50 here, we really would see the stock market take off, uh, continue this takeoff. Uh, what about Netflix? Netflix uh, looking good, not making a new high like Amazon, but certainly still looking very nicely. Uh, it certainly looks like it can test the, the sideways action. So we've got Amazon and Netflix all out bullish. We got Goldman Sachs and Apple uh, bullish, but at key resistance. We got Goldman Sachs still in a range. And let's go to Priceline. We'll finish off with Priceline. And we can see Priceline looking good too. Still in a range here. Um, there is a little resistance here to watch, but we are above the 20 and 50 million average. So uh, we've got Netflix, Priceline, uh, Amazon, above the 50 moving average, above the 20 moving average. we got Goldman Sachs. Uh, I'm sorry. we got Apple above the 50 and 200 moving average, but I keep resistance. Goldman Sachs and Google still below some of those moving average um, and either sideways or at a key resistance price level. 
Okay, so now we're going to take a switch over and take a look at the dollar here on a daily. And we talked about this last week, this downtrend line uh, from a couple years. Now we have this uptrend line going in. And as we zoom in, we can kind of see that this is where we are. We've got a nice little triangle wedge going on here uh, that will uh, extend on over. So if the market, uh, the dollar is going to bounce, this is where it's going to bounce. Um, if the dollar breaks lower, then you can see the market really rally um, because of that inverse relationship. So we'll know uh, probably pretty quickly what, what's going to happen here. Um, or we're just going to continue in this sideways action uh, until we finally get the break. As far as gold is concerned, we can see that we bounced off of the 1477 area as we thought. Now the question is, now that we've tested it, um, this is where buyers clearly have found value. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me to see us go back up to the 1500, 1510 level because this is where buyers have found value. Um, so we'll have to see. And again, with that inverse relationship, it's kind of interesting to see that the dollar went down and the gold went down together when usually uh, there's that flight to safety. Um, and so now... Uh, um, as the dollar went down, um, there wasn't a flight to gold as you normally would see and as the market um, rallied. Uh, finally, we have crude oil. And here we can see um, uh, a nice downtrend line that we're watching here. Uh, we broke out of to the downside after the uh, strategic oil release. We'll come back up and we're testing some key resistance here. Resistance of about 96, resistance of the 20 moving average, support of 200. So I think we'll see a break one way or the other here coming pretty soon. In our education spotlight, we've been talking about what separates winning and losing traders. And so we're going to continue that discussion with the simple question, do you have full control of your emotions? And that will probably want it to be the biggest thing that separates winning traders and winning traders, that discipline, that focus to follow their system day after day, not jumping the gun, not afraid to pull the trigger, but uh, a belief in their system, a positive expectancy because they back tested it, they've written down the results, and they've proven that over time my system works. And that allows you to have the peace of mind to trade your system. Um, those traders who are jumping in and out of systems, who are not testing their systems, who do not have control of their emotions are the ones who are struggling to be profitable day after day because they are afraid to trade or they, they cut their profits too soon, they, they fight and stay in trades too long, and thus they can't win day after day. Um, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Move with Mike on Facebook, on YouTube, and Twitter. Are you, we have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? And we do have some great things on our blog this week, but first we want to talk about our user resources, our free five-part video course on high probability trading. Uh, we've got a great mentorship, again, that psychological capital to pull the trigger. We can help you with one-on-one -on -one coaching, help you develop a personalized trading plan. We've got a futures trading room. Last week they earned $985. They trade all the major futures contracts. Uh, uh, 20 free trades and intraday margin as low as $300 uh, with our broker here. And of course, we have our charting progress allows you to do your scans to find the stocks that are on a move. On our blog, you'll find some new things. Uh, we've got a new uh, interview series on developing a, uh, the trader's mindset. That's on our blog. Obviously, you can find that at michaelglass.com. And we have a great video on inside bar trading. Also, a post on the top 10 technical indicators. So we want to thank you guys. And as always, it's not about the system. It's not about the indicator. And we talk about that. It's about the ability to pull the trigger off your trade. And, uh, and our coaching program will help you build that psychological capital to be a consistent, profitable trader. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.